Hello my dear friends welcome back to the channel and this is your friend Dr Suresh Hainwi today we are going to learn a very important topic in dental materials or operative dentistry that is pulp protection i would like to cover it in two videos so as you all know tooth is made up of four structures that is you have the pulp which occupies the center portion of the tooth which is covered by the dentine in the crown and the root structure and in the crown we have the enamel and in the root surface we have the cementum so we daily subject the tooth to many of the type of stimuluses we may drink a hot coffee we may eat a very cold ice cream and many other times you might feel some sensitivity and if there is extreme temperature changes you will still maintain the vitality of the tooth and how is that actually possible that's possible because god has tried to protect the pulp which is a soft tissue by giving a armor to it which is made up of hard tissue surprisingly the pulp is the only two structure in which there is a blood supply and the nerve supply and it nourishes the tooth so maintaining the vitality of this pulp is very important and many a times when the pulp is subjected to many of the stimuluses or temperature variation or when you bite the hard tissue actually absorbs such forces prevents the heat from reaching the pulp because that's where exactly the nerve is situated and that's how your pulp is getting protected the enamel is the outermost covering in the crown and it is 96% inorganic doesn't have any nerve doesn't have any cells unless the tooth wears it tries its best to absorb the forces because it is the strongest part of the body but the most important aspect when you talk about insulation of the pulp from many of the stimuluses it is the dentine because the bulk of the tooth is made by the dentine and not by the enamel or cementum and dentine has tubules i want you to see two important points in this image if you see the diameter of the dental tubules towards the enamel and compare it with, with the diameter of the tubule towards the pulp then you will realize that the diameter at the enamel surface is smaller than the diameter towards the pulpal side so if you are removing 2 mm of dentine the diameter of tubule which will be exposed to the cavity preparation would be larger than compared to a cavity preparation where you have removed only 1 mm of dentine second is you can see that the although odontoblasts which are the cells which are present in the pulpal end of the dentine but do they do send some extensions of odontoblastic processes and some nerve terminals which may even reach the dentino enamel junction because of this if you go to a deeper layer of dentine the chances of stimulating the nerves is more than a cavity preparation where the dentine is hardly cut so it is now understood that if the tooth loses the enamel and dentine then you would end up hurting the pulp which eventually may lead to its death or may lead to its inflammation in which the patient can only give you one kind of signs and symptom that is pain because the pulp doesn't have any other types of receptors except nociceptors so any type of stimulus which which reaches the pulp it will only respond with one symptom that is pain so this is how the tooth protects itself from many of the stimulus so that the pulp doesn't get damaged unfortunately many a time situations which are natural like atresion or which are pathological like dental caries may end up reaching the deeper portion of the cavity and we may have to cut a lot of decayed tooth structure and reach the normal tooth structure before doing a restoration now in such situation if you don't replace the lost dentine or these materials then the stimulus which is applied over the restoration can reach the pulp very fast which can lead to problem to the patient like sensitivity and the pulp may show signs of inflammation and eventually may lead to death of it leading to further treatment like root canal treatment so this whole procedure of 
replacing the lost insulative structure especially the dentin is called as pulp protection the pulp protection basically consists of three segments the varnish the liner and the base but when do you use a varnish when do you use a liner and a base depends on how much dentin is remaining when you excavated the caries please remember if the caries has reached the pulp then there is no question of pulp protection because the pulp is already in a irreversible state so we have to go for a root canal treatment the remaining dentin is very important and we term it as rdt that is remaining dentin thickness this is what is going to tell you whether in your cavity preparation you would have to apply a varnish or you would need to apply a liner or a base or maybe combination of all three or two now before going ahead let us first understand which type of stimulus can reach the pulp during the dental procedures the first is this thermal stimulus now this will not happen with all type of restorations we all know that we use aluminum or stainless steel metal utensils to cook why because it is able to transmit the heat to the food so imagine you are doing a metallic restoration in a deep cavity where the dentin is less and the patient drinks a hot coffee or eats ice cream this temperature will easily get transferred to the pulp in case there is no sufficient amount of dentin because all these restorations are made up of metal and metal is a good conductor of heat so situation like this will arise when you give a gold restoration or a cast restoration and amalgam restoration which are poor insulators of heat if you are giving a composite restoration the chances of this are very less because composite is a very good insulator of thermal stimulus many a times we apply heavy force during condensation of the restorative material for example when you are condensing the amalgam you have to apply 3 to 4 lb of pressure which is very high and since in a cavity preparation if the dentin thickness is insufficient this force may eventually damage the pulp so this type of stimulus or irritation is called as mechanical irritation imagine you have made a very deep cavity preparation and you would put some material into the restoration which is highly acidic now since you know that the deeper the cavity preparation the diameter of the tubules which is exposed will be larger so when you apply any restoration which can leach out few amount of acidic component they will transfer easily from the dentinal tubules and reach the pulp which may damage it so this is very common with zinc phosphate cement as you know that it is highly acidic many a times you may have good amount of dentin but the restorations like the amalgam will corrode and lead to release of many of the corrosion products which may travel through the dentinal tubules which are exposed and eventually lead to discoloration so in such situation also pulp protection is really important so pulp protection is not just to prevent the mechanical or thermal you may use it to prevent the chemical irritants from reaching the pulp or even the dentin so that the discoloration of the tooth doesn't happen there is a situation called as ganolism it happens specifically when you have two restorations of dissimilar metals if electrogalvanism happens and if there is no sufficient amount of dentin between the restoration and the pulp the voltage what is generated can easily reach the pulp and lead to shock kind of situations every time when the patients bite so here also the amount of dentin which is remaining is really important
so my dear friends i hope you understood what is pulpal protection and why it is needed so now we'll try to learn more about the different aspects of pulpal protection as mentioned earlier the pulpal protection can be achieved by application of a varnish liner or a base now i am going to give you three scenarios in which the remaining dentin thickness will vary in one situation you have more than 2 mm of the dentin present after the cavity preparation in second situation the remaining dentin is less than 2 mm but more than 0.5 mm in another situation the remaining dentin thickness is less than 0.5 mm so if you want to estimate how much dentin is remaining it is done on the radiographs now in the first situation where the remaining dentin thickness is more than 2 mm we only advise the application of varnish before going ahead why only varnish is sufficient for pulpal protection when the remaining dentin thickness is more than 2 mm let us first see what is a varnish now varnish is pretty much simple to your nail polish which is liquid when you apply and when it evaporates it leaves a layer of nail polish so in dentistry the varnish is resin dissolved in a solvent so when you apply it in the cavity preparation the solvent will evaporate leaving a layer of resin so coming to the point that so why only varnish is sufficient when the remaining dentin thickness is 2 mm that is pretty simple basically what research has found that if you have dentin which is more than 2 mm that is sufficient to insulate the pulp from any thermal mechanical and electrical irritants but since the dentin is porous because of the dentana tubules present in it the corrosion products or any other components which may be released from the restoration can penetrate through the dentana tubules so it is important that we block the tubule and this is exactly how the varnish acts into the cavity preparation in the first image you can see the dentinal tubules are open and in the second image the dentinal tubules are closed the second image represents application of a varnish so does that mean i can use varnish below all type of restorations absolutely not there is one important contraindication for application of varnish that is when you are doing a composite restoration you should never apply a varnish below a composite restoration since it is found to affect the curing of composite restoration when it comes in contact with it now there are some other important points which you should know always apply the varnish in two coats because when you apply one coat and the solvent evaporates there are some areas where the varnish is not seen so to cover these porosities we have to apply varnish in two coats the thickness of varnish is just 2 to 5 micron so it doesn't give you any protection apart from the chemical irritation so if the dentin thickness is less you cannot apply varnish in more thickness and expect that the other irritations are taken care by the varnish that is not possible varnish as it blocks the dentinal tubules it also prevents the discoloration of tooth from the corrosive products which are released from the amalgam now there is another one important point which you should remember that why varnish is so famous below amalgam restoration now amalgam restoration is actually called as a self sealing restoration because although amalgam stays mechanically into the tooth structure but there is always a small gap between the amalgam and the tooth and this small gap can allow the passage of microorganisms which can go below the restoration and cause a secondary decay to prevent that varnish is applied is a must below amalgam restoration and once after 3 months are is over it is seen that the corrosion products which are released from the amalgam will occupy this space between the tooth and the restoration and it is then the restoration is sealing by itself till that varnish is really helpful to close this gap the last question where all do you apply the varnish it is applied all over the cavity preparation 
if you are doing a class 1 cavity preparation then you have to apply it on buccal lingual mesial distal and pulpal floor inside the cavity preparation so my dear friends i hope the first video of pulpal protection will help you to understand the concept better in the next video we'll try to learn more about the bases and the liner if you have any questions please feel free to write in the comment section and let me know how i can improve what i should improve in the next video which will be made for the pulpal protection do subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you once again into the next video